Bills are up to minus 10 this weekend, Rev. They are 10-point favorites hosting the Tennessee Titans in Orchard Park, a double-digit favorite. Now, you look at this one, Rev. Now, let's talk about our initial thoughts here. Because I had looked at the Rams game a week ago, and I said, well – Two and a half point favorites on the road. I just, I can't bet this. I can't bet this game because not only, I, I do have a ton of confidence in my bills, but I really thought it was going to be a down to the wire type game. And we got mm-hmm. anything about that two and a half points was yeah. a chunk change. They win by 21. So you go into this week and now, of course, you have the mentality of, well, minus 10. I mean, hey, I know it's a lot, but we saw what the bills are capable of last week. You look at this game, Rev, off of off of last Thursday, your initial thoughts, not only based on what you saw out of the bills, but essentially with the Titans falling flat on their face against the Giants, what do you expect to see coming up this Monday? I expect nothing less than what we saw Thursday night. I expect a blowout. I mean, I really do. Um, this is not the same Bills team, and it's not the same Titans team. They, without AJ Brown, they've got nothing. They've, they've got nobody. Um, we, we we know we know we know the engine that runs that team, and that's Derrick Henry. Um, last, I mean, I mean, the Giants beat them. Okay, and Derrick Henry had 82 yards on 21 uh, carries um, with no touchdowns. So if we can bottle up Derrick Henry, and you look at this revamped defensive line. Who could? I mean, by, by the way, this defensive line looks legit. Yeah, this team unreal. looks they, they look like 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 the defensive line that we've thought that they could yeah, be we're on seven sacks game. without bringing a blitz, man. I mean, without a blitz is insane, crazy. And that's and I heard uh, Leslie Frazier talk about it. Like that's what you want. You want to be. He's always wanted to rush for drop the rest back, drop the rest in coverage, and get to the quarterback with just four. You don't want to have to blitz all the time. I mean, if if you want to use it as a luxury, then go for it, but not to be not not a necessity. And we have the dogs up front to be able to get to the passer. Now we're gonna find out, you know, as the season progresses, whether or not that was the Bills' D line that did it, or the or the O line of the Rams are just that bad. We'll find out, but I, I thought we all know what the tight what the Titans are about. Okay, they're not going to air the ball out. This is all about the run game and stopping Derrick Henry. If we can show that we can stop Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill is going to have a heck of a time trying to go and beat us through the air, especially once we get a lead. So I'm looking forward to it, man. Ten point, ten points. Look, man, I, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man, it could be, it could be up there, man. 14, 17 points. Usually I don't like touching games like that and bills are not just because 10 points in any game, you know, just like yesterday, would I have guessed that the Titans could beat the giants by 10 points? I absolutely would have. Would I have guessed the Colts could have beat the Texans by 10 points? I absolutely would have, but that's the NFL for you. You just never know. But yeah, let me tell you right now, man, these bills are a different animal. These bills different. are a totally different animal. And I'm taking a look right now at what I saw last year. And I was at that game in Tennessee and I didn't want to speak for two days. I had to drive yeah. 12 hours home. It was just awful. I hated every single second of it just because of how much I knew that not only were the Bills the better team, but they were this close. They're a Josh Allen trip away. And it really all came down to the fact that like last year, which we saw on numerous occasions, the Bills were giving up the big play. And that was really the difference. If you remember, there was a yeah. massive run by Derrick Henry that wound up breaking the game open. I tweeted out yesterday. I said, you know, is it, it's really hard for me to not think that the Bills just don't wax wax the Titans coming yeah. Monday night. And here's why you look at the game last year, ref 34, 31 and the bills. If it wasn't for that Josh Allen trip that I keep referring to, they win mm. that ball game. Derek Henry went off for a buck 43 on 20 carries. So we're talking seven, a clip here, rev. Yeah. And not only that, but three touchdowns, one in which being a 76 yard house call, this defensive line is not allowing those numbers. I'm not saying you shut down Derek Henry because that's a tall order for anybody, but right. I'll be damned if they go out there and allow a buck 43 and three scores again, especially a 76 yarder. With that said, Rev, they do allow that last year, and they still should have won the game. You remove that this year with an improved Bills team, and I don't think you can say at all the Tennessee Titans are improved. They're, they, I mean, like I was talking before you came on, they're the number one seed in the AFC last year. Yeah. I didn't think they looked like it last year at all. I sure as hell don't think they're going to be near that again this year. The Bills are the better team, and the area in which the Titans exposed against them last year is now potentially the strongest element of this mm-hmm. Bills team. Yeah. I think they destroy Tennessee come Monday. I understand 
full and well because the, the comment section of my Twitter, which by the way, this past week, good guy, I got to just take a break on Twitter. I was telling the boys earlier, and that's going to be part of my segment later in the show called "What Pissed Bot Off This Weekend." Yeah, and we're going to get into that in a second because it's just, oh my god. But the one thing I noticed with constantly, and I understand. Because it's, you know, the superstition to don't jinx it. I'm not even yeah. worried about that really anymore with this Bills team until I'm probably proven otherwise, and I'm sure at some point it'll happen. But mm. why do I got to suppress my feelings anymore, Rev? I suppressed them last week against the Rams, right? I Don't suppress them, but Yeah, why? Why can't I just embrace the fact that this team is as good as advertised? Right. Hell, they're better than advertised last week. Four turnovers, 10-10 at half. That game should have been over going into the locker room. They didn't even show us close to what they're capable of last week, and they still get that job done. I mean, think about it like this, right? The Bills yeah. win 31-10 to 10 with four turnovers. Joe Burrow had four interceptions, and they lose to a much inferior team in the Steelers. That's the difference right now, in my yeah. opinion. Difference. So. Yeah, I see Scotty coming in here. What's Scotty got to say, Rob? Scotty comes in with a super chat. Uh, Scott, appreciate it. He says, yo, if we can contain Henry, we have a real good shot of winning. I mean, look at what we did with the Rams and Donald. We destroyed them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly what it comes did. down to. Yeah. And that, to me, is why if I can look at the last year's box score and I can look at the game, you know, in its totality and think back to me being in that stadium – it really all came down to Derrick Henry's ability to bust one off almost every carry. And that did open it up for Tannehill. I mean, he was getting seven and a half yards a clip as well, uh, throwing the ball. He only completed it 18 times. But I remember that really opened up the play action game for them. And it's what kept them in the game all throughout. Like we were just, you know, right in that super chat there from Scott, what he's saying is dead on. And that's why I have no problem throwing my suppression, you know, to the wind here. I, I, yeah. I Everybody in my mentions was saying they've had our number the last couple of years. You know, we got to take each game one at a time. And I totally get that. I totally do. Like I was just saying, didn't expect right. the Giants to lose, uh, to beat them. Didn't expect the Steelers to beat the Bengals. Didn't expect Houston to tie Indianapolis. I get all that. But the Bills are a better team. And last year they should have beat them. With Derrick Henry going off, what's going to happen when this D line shows up and doesn't allow him to touch what he did a season ago? Yeah, well, and see, and that's that's the huge difference is the defensive line. We stars not on the line anymore. You know, Harrison Phillips is not here. I mean, Daquan Jones and Tim Settle have been, you know, just stupendous across this defensive line. And so when you have those two big guys, um, of course you got Ed Oliver in there too, but those two big guys, you know, rotating in and out, you know, from the just at the one tech position, not even mentioning big man Jordan Phillips, the inside of the defensive line is so, so tough to move to where it just it just frees up our, our pass rushers, Ed Oliver, I mean, uh, 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 Vaughn Miller and A.J. Epinesa, uh, Greg Rousseau, uh, Boogie Basham even a little bit. And so, so the defensive line is nothing like it was last year so if we can like i said play big man football and contain derrick henry which i fully expect us to do it's gonna be a long it's gonna be a long game for for uh for the titans and and, and ryan Tannehill. and when i when i look at last year just kind of looking at the box at the box score and, and some mm -hmm. of the stats this is what interested me because when i look at josh allen he was 35 for 47 he had 47 pass attempts yeah they couldn't run it at all 47 pass attempts yeah and they carried the ball 23 times but i'm looking at you know uh Derek, uh, Devin Singletary, 5 for 27. Uh, yeah. Zach Moss, 8 for 24. You know, they really, and they had, they ended up with 20, 82 yards, you yeah. know, combined rushing. But now when I look at that, that uh, this past Thursday night's game against the Rams, Josh Allen was 26 for 31 passing, 31 attempts. 31 attempts, but look at the rushing, though. Yeah, that's look, right, right where you want him. The 30 mark is yes. like absolute chef's kiss mark, in my it's, opinion. It's, it's a perfect balance and because yes. when you look, when you look at, at the rushing, they, they rush for 25 when you include Josh and, 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 and Singletary, who had 8 for, eight for 48. They had 121 yards on the ground, yes. averaging 4.8 <laughs> per clip. So that's the balance that Jet Sean McDermott was tr was talking about in this offseason, yes. having a more balanced approach. That's what you want. You want to be able to, you know, uh, just just take Josh's attempts down a little bit to 30 around around 30 35 attempts, but then you want to be able to run the ball at will when you when you need to, which we showed the ability to do it against the Rams. Now, will we be able to do it against the Titans? That's to be determined. But if we can if we can still manage that 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 balance that there's no way there is absolutely there is absolutely no way you know that that the titans are going to win is it, unless we end up you know uh having you know multiple turnovers again because we can't expect to have all these turnovers and still win games like we did against the rams but i just think that the, the way it's looking 
it's it's going to be a complete utter blowout. I think it's going to be that bad of a game uh, for the Ram. I mean, for the uh, Titans, and a great game for the Bills. Josh Allen is he's a different guy. When you looked at him against the Rams, he just looks different. This this guy looks like he started off from where he left off with right against the, against the the Chiefs, and he is just. I think this is his revenge tour. He's he's going on a on a freaking tour and he's ready to, to destroy every single team all 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 gas no breaks man I can't, I can't wait for it and i hope the mafia shows up like i know they will and turns that place out baby that's gonna, gonna be, be nice live in there it's gonna be live in there uh, for those wondering by the way josh allen finishes with the highest pff grade of the weekend number one yes, overall is. as far as far as quarterback is concerned and, hey there was some great performances mahomes looked terrific herbert yeah. looked terrific so just goes to show you truly how much he separated himself from the pack rev i'm so glad you brought up the running game last year the amount of times josh allen threw it because it's exactly the angle i wanted to take right now yeah. looking towards this game i understand we don't have a saquon bar I understand Singletary isn't Saquon Barkley. Zach Moss isn't Saquon Barkley. How m- most running backs in the league aren't. That's a specimen. Yeah. Me being a Penn State fan, I got to watch Saquon Barkley up in person many a time at Penn State. And to this day, he will always go down as one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen in person. Just extraordinary. He's one one With that said, however... The Giants ran the ball at will against this Tennessee Titans team the other night. 32 carries for 238. They were averaging seven and a half yards a carry. I understand, right? Saquon Barkley, he's, you know, he's back. He's healthy. And when he is healthy, he's one of the better running backs in the league. With that said, though, Rep, he went off for a buck 64. He's averaging nine yards a carry. And you might say to me, well, okay, but, but it's still Saquon Barkley. He's capable of doing that. Daniel Jones even had 25 yards on the ground. Yeah. If Daniel Jones can rush for 25 yards, four yards a carry, Matt Breida was rushing for five yards a carry. You're telling me after last week, seeing how Josh Allen ran the ball, seeing how Devin Singletary ran the ball last week. I mean, if you go to the Rams game, right, a much, much, much better D line for the Rams than the Tennessee Titans. Josh Allen ran the ball for five and a half yards a carry. Devin Singletary ran the ball for six yards to carry and Singletary was suppressed last week eight for 48 yeah, he, he was better get some more carries this week especially after what the Giants just did to these Titans yeah. but the point I'm trying to make here Rev is they ran the ball at will against these Titans and it allowed a quarterback as mediocre as Daniel Jones to go mm. 17 to 21 and we know how efficient Josh Allen was last week. He broke the single game completion percentage record. You mean to tell me, knowing the capability of Singletary and what he did last week, knowing the capability of Josh Allen and his running game, that they can't touch down on similar rushing numbers while also extending even further the passing game way beyond what the Giants did against the Tennessee Titans. Rev, I'm with you all the way. To me, man, this game is going to be floodgates busting open, <laughs> and I can't wait because we need that. Man. Ah, yes, yes, Ooh, them Titans, I yes man. That's <laughs> what I'm saying, dude. It's gonna be nice. Man. I can't, I can't wait, man. It's, it's. We need, we need. I need motor. I mean, they have to at least test the D line of the of the Titans, right? At least see if okay. Did did were they able to? Did they correct? You know uh, what happened? Uh, uh, you know uh, against against the Giants. I mean, were they? If not, keep pounding that rock, man. But there's no way they're gonna be able to stop Josh Allen. They they can't do it. And if we can balance that with the just a this this an efficient running running a game, it's ridiculous, man. It, it's, it's game over. It's game over. And back to this point here by Sailor, because this is what I was talking, and I was heavy on this last week. Because the reason the Rams game was so big to me is because that game was hyped up to no end, as were the Bills. And the way that that game went to me was going to be just an unbelievable amount of confidence. Uh, either gained or lost for the Bills just from that one game alone. After you go out and do what you did to the defending champ, you mean to tell me that not only are they hitting this game full stride, but they're also taking on a team who might be hanging their heads right now. They just lost to a rookie head coach in his first game against a franchise who hasn't been able to beat anybody. I mean, that was an embarrassing, embarrassing loss for the Titans. And, uh, you know, if, if the Bills didn't need any other fuel off of coming off of that victory, Josh Allen, you know, he uses any scrap of whatever he can get his hands on to give himself motivation. He has not he has not gotten it done against these Tennessee Titans. They have had their number, and he knows the last time they were out, he was an inch shy. I'm telling you right now, they're coming into this game 
with a full head of steam and not for anything else. It's under the lights and it's at home. And we all know what happened the last time it was under the lights and at home. The yes. Bills put on one of the greatest offensive performances the NFL has ever seen. Mm. I mean, Rev, I really have nothing but the utmost confidence going into this week. And I really would love somebody to tell me a reason otherwise. I just don't see how you can compare these two teams, especially after you saw what a much worse offense in the New York Giants was capable of doing against this Tennessee Titans defense just a week ago or just a day ago. I, I don't see it happening. I honestly don't see it. I mean, and, unless we just we just poo poo the bed, which I don't expect to happen at all, because I think this team, um, I, I think they still have that taste in their mouths from from the KC divisional game. I, I think that is still fresh in their mouths. They hate that what happened, right? And uh, and they're they're coming full steam ahead this this entire season. And I can expect, I think we all can expect this type of football from them for the rest of the season. Granted, will there be some ups and downs? Yeah, I think so. But I don't think that that we can expect them to have. These these quote unquote trap games like they did last year, Jags game or or losing you know these these close games. I, I don't see that happening at all. They look laser focused, and and this game against the Rams. I mean, say what you want, but this was a huge statement game for the Bills. All the pressure was on Buffalo this game. It was there was hardly any pressure on the Rams defending Super Bowl champions. You would think that they would have some pressure. No, it was all on the Bills because of the hype. And they went in that game into SoFi Stadium, Bills Mafia leading the charge, right? And they just handled business like there was no pressure at all. And I can't. And now they get to come home and come home and play the team that they lost against. They haven't been able to win in the past couple of seasons. And you think for one second that Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills and the entire team is not going to be coming for blood. Josh is going to be taking souls. He's going to be just snatching them left, right, and center, like my man Rico says. And it's going to be over early. It's going to be – they're going to deflate them very early, man. Truth Two Hearts coming in saying, Bob, Josh is one and two against the Titans, so I wouldn't say they have his number. I mean, I agree. Obviously, it's not like, you know, it's not like what the, the number Brady had against the Bill. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is, though, the last two outings, the Titans made the Bills look inferior to who they actually were, right? Yes. Last year, the Bills were a better team. They lost. The year prior, the Bills were the better team. They lost. Um, and I don't really know how to explain it. I mean, the COVID game was so odd. The Titans beat the hell out of the Bills, and it made no yeah. sense, really. They just didn't show up. And then last year, it just came down to the fact that they let up one too many big plays, and, and they didn't do enough at the end. They slip, they fall, they lose. Um, I don't think – and what I'm getting at here is when I say they have his number, I want Josh Allen to think they have his number. Right? Yes. Because if Josh Allen thinks they have his number, then he's going to make sure that they lose that number. It's like going up to the – it's like, you know – you go up to the girl at the bar and you give her your number, right? And she's way out of your league. She's going to lose that number. She's going to throw that thing in the trash, move on with her night. That's what I want Josh Allen to do with the Tennessee Titans coming yeah, up man. this weekend. Um, I also look at it too, Rev. And I just think that when you look at the Monday night situation and kind of the, the aura that comes over these bills recently in these primetime games, they just seem to, to have a different swag about them. And I think that us getting that taste of that again at home, I know people can actually kind of, they can spin it into a way where they say, well, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, it means something, whatever. I personally think, and I've been there too many times to count it out. The, the under the lights, uh, like vibe and energy at the Ralph in a game like that, it adds fuel. And this oh, is yeah. a team that I I just – we haven't seen this team in that environment yet. And honest to God, man, I think it could be scarier than last week. I just do. The Rams are a better team, and the Bills yeah. did not play to their full potential. And I just think you add all these elements together, man, I just don't see – I mean, I just – I want someone to make the argument to me as to how they see this game being – like a barn burner. The only reason I felt last week that I saw that is because the Rams have a terrific D. They have a terrific wide receiver core. Matt Stafford's right up there. Outside of Derrick Henry, I mean, the, the Titans just don't have any of that. It's just not a comparison. The Rams to Bills were a comparison to me. Very evenly matched team. Yeah. Bills, Titans, I, this year, I just don't see it. Yeah, and and we know we knew the weakness, you know, the Bills um, in the past, you know, couple of years was, was – just the D line going against against offenses that had that power running game with the legit back the, the Derrick Henrys the uh, the Jonathan Taylors, we just weren't strong enough and stout enough on the defensive line to handle those guys. 
So, but now this year, and granted, when you look at the Rams, Daryl Henderson is no is no um, uh, Derrick Henry, right? I mean, the, the 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 but the Rams can run the ball though. Uh, but 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 we we shut that mess down completely oh down. Oh my god! We completely. had every fantasy owner in the world wanting to oh. jump off the nearest bridge because of Cam Akers. Yeah, and whatever. Uh, Derrick and Henderson, like you said, there was nothing yeah. going on. Nothing going on. And so I, I think right now Leslie Frazier is going to have these guys focused, shut down Derrick Henry quick. Um, the, the 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 defensive line is strong and stout. Like I said, when when you add a guy like 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 uh, Daquan Jones, um, and then Tim Settle, and then you bring in Jordan Phillips back, all three of those guys right there, just just the big beefy guys up front, are enough to handle that. Okay, not to mention then you add in Ed Oliver, who's going to be back healthy, um, coming off the ball really fast, getting the backfield. It's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be tough sledding for for Derrick Henry to kind of get rolling. Now, granted, we know with him it's a it's a four quarter dog fight. You got I mean, you got to be able to to withstand him for four full quarters um, because that's he just gets heated up. The more the more he gets he gets carried. So, but I think what 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 helps us out though is that we have such an incredible uh, rotation across the defensive line where we can keep these guys fresh for the entire game. We can give waves and waves of defensive linemen, you know, to handle what we can expect from Derrick Henry throughout the course of the game. So I think that if we shut him down, it's, it's, it's a wrap. They don't have A.J. Brown. That was a key. They had well, Last year they had A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, um, and both of which when we played them, the entire defense, I mean the entire Tennessee Titans, they were healthy. They had gotten back from, from being injured, and we played them at full strength. And uh, that, that was their game, was that play-action game. They had Derrick Henry that run the ball hard, play-action to A.J. Brown, Julio Jones. That was their thing. They don't have any of them now. All they have is Robert Woods. You know what I'm saying? And who had so, one catch. Who had one catch yesterday? Yes. <laughs> so I mean, outside of that, I don't see it. I, I don't. I don't see it. I, I, I just, I just up. Julio Jones looked better last night in one game with Tom Brady Bucks, and he looked in any single game the entire season last yeah, year. Yeah, man. It's, it's like, at TV12, man. I think. I think he's on TV. I think. I think Tom looked, Brady got him on TV12, and he looked, he looked good. good. He looked he, good. He, he looked he, as he good as he ever good. did. I'm like, oh did, my man. god. Who else? But who else? But Brady in the Bucks. Yeah. Uh, the Mafia King coming in. My main man. He's always showing love everywhere, all across the platforms. And Mafia King saying Tannehill hasn't won in Buffalo in his career, and his stats in Buffalo are good at all it's a great point i actually did not know well actually that's not true though because Tannehill won in the covid game in buffalo but i think you're probably referring to games that were where there were fans in the stands and i'm gonna go with that point because that's the ones that matter mm. that covid yeah. game forget it who cares nobody oh, was there to witness it. nobody was there to witness it i know for a <laughs> fact though i think Tannehill prior to that i know i know his stats aren't good that was, that was the outlier. And like I said, that's why these games are very odd to me because that game in particular, there was no way the Titans were that much better than the Bills the way the score reflected that game. That's why it was so odd to me. Rev, the one thing I want to touch on going into this game that was definitely the biggest concern for the Bills last week was the four turnovers. Now you look at those four turnovers on paper and you say, man, that's a lot. I mean, right, that's yeah. a lot, right? Isaiah McKenzie hands one over. Absolutely yeah. hands one over. Right. That is not on Josh Allen. That ball should be caught. It usually is caught 99 out of 100 times. That's one of them. The other bad interception from Allen, he stared it down way too long. It was the most time he had to throw almost all day, and he, and he turned it over. It was a bad pick, but it was a great interception as well. It was a great play on the ball. But that in itself, yes, definitely uh, you know, on Allen. Mm -hmm. James Cook, fumble. I got to chalk that one up, man, to a rookie with nerves. I don't know what else you could put it up to. His yeah. first carry, and he fumbles it. And I'll tell you this, Rev, I doubt we see much of him at all this coming week, if if any. We know how McDermott operates there. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Zach Moss with a fumble that is uncharacteristic, and I just look at that as saying, okay, well, hopefully you got it out of the way now. The way I saw it last week, Rev, with the turnovers, the four seemed more than it actually felt like. I don't mm -hmm. think we expect Allen – to throw two on a consistent basis, especially when one of them really wasn't on him. No. Brad, he, he threw the ball for about 85% last week. I mean, I don't yeah. really think he's going to go into this game and all of a sudden just start turning the ball over left and right. Yeah. Yeah. And the fumbles, usually that's not a consistent thing. The James Cook, I'm tossing that one up to him being, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Right. I mean, yeah, I really just, just, yeah, yeah just rookie, man. Yeah. Just, just, just rookie mistake. You know, he learned, yeah. he learned from it, I think. For you, though, is that something that, you know, is concerning to you or do you look at it as, hey, glad you got it out of the way, especially in a win like that, move on, not worried about it? Yeah, no, I'm not concerned. I mean, game, game one, um, you know, it happened. It was unfortunate. 
Um, you know, rookies, I mean, he fumbled the ball. He got, he got set down for, for, for a while. Right. Um, and got, I got a chance to reset and came back in for a little bit, but, but you know, that was it. Um, Zach Moss, as you mentioned, um, that, 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 that's why, that's why, and I'm gonna say this and I know Pierre's in, I know he's in the chat. He's going to appreciate this. That's why we need motor to have to handle the bulk of the carries. He forget, needs at least double digit carries, for, man. Yes. Yeah, so for, forget forget this wrong. whole, forget this whole, this is our, you know, running back by community. Let's just, let's give, let's give Zach Moss some care. No, for, for what? We saw what Zach Moss did. Give the ball to motor. Let him be your lead guy. Unless he needs a blow, then then, then leave him in the game. You know what I'm saying? And Agreed. if you want to throw some wrinkles in there, you know, and, and bring James Cook in as a receiver out of the back, then, then do that. But the, if, if you but the, the leading back on this team needs to be motor singletary. Give him 10 to 15 uh, carries. A game and leave him alone. Stop, stop, stop this mess, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, so I, I chopped that up to just coaching. Don't because because Motor didn't fumble the ball. <laughs> he didn't fumble it. And then you know that Josh Allen interception um, that they made uh, when he when thrown across the middle to Jameson Crowder. I think, man, if you look at it closely, man, Jameson, look at look at it on the replay. Crowder right. slowed up. He, he slowed up on yeah, his route. Team, I think, yeah, I think, Adam I think he was it. expecting to kind of sit right. down on his own, and he was supposed to keep on going because it was man coverage, and Josh was expecting him to keep going across. Now, Josh didn't throw the best ball. I think he threw it a little bit late, but but still, Crowder, he should he have hit that thing and just kept kept running. But I don't, I don't see that up. Well, maybe you chalk that up to a lack of chemistry between the two. Either way, yeah. though, I do agree with you. It did seem like there was some miscommunication, but Allen had enough time. Either way, it wound up being an interception. To me, it's more on Allen for that pick than, of course, it was. Yeah, with the NZ the kids, one. yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I, w- I will say this, but I will say yeah, that I will say this. Let me let me jump in. I guarantee you this. I, and I put that I put this tweet out too during the game. I said, I guarantee Khalil Shakir will not be inactive. Yeah, I'm game. interested to see that. I hope he isn't. He shouldn't be. No. No yeah, reason to keep five out. linebackers and five running backs this week. Let let Khalil Shakir get some burn. Let him do it. Let him get some burn. Um, and you know what? You know what else, Rob? Man, I, I understand. Like Scotty's coming in here saying, you know, four was not good. Of course, it's not good. You know, one's not good. I don't want any four, let, let alone four. You know what I mean? Scotty's yeah. saying, you know, it will bite us if we don't clean it up. I agree. At the same oh, yeah. time, though, look, go ahead and turn the ball over nine times. You're going to win the win the game by three touchdowns. I mean, really, if your defense is going to be able to bail you out every single time. Obviously, you're not rooting for it. But the thing is, is that if you can go and do that and still win in the fashion that you did, that's why I'm not concerned. And I think that also gives the offense a bit of added – it gives them an added edge. It allows Allen to, to just do more than I think he would have been able to last year knowing, hey, we can try this out, bomb it deep. God forbid yeah. we turn the ball over here. I trust my defense to get it back for us. I think that means a lot on those shoulders of a quarterback to know that you trust mm-hmm. your defense enough to get the ball back for you if and when you do make a mistake. Yeah, hand, yeah, hands down. Um, I, I mean, and Josh even mentioned it. You know, the the defense bailed, bailed these guys out. You know, what I'm saying, but I think yeah. they're going to clean it up. It's it's not you you, de- you definitely don't want to have you know turnovers, let let alone multiple turnovers in a game. Um, but I'm just I just don't think it's room it's reason for, for for concern right now after game one. Now if we're if we're if we're three, four weeks into the schedule and we're still turning the ball over like that, then that's room for wait a minute. There, there's an issue here. But I think that they clean it up. We'll see what happens um this game and go from there. But I'm I'm glad that I'm glad they got it out of the way. But it is good to know, it's reassuring, like you said, to know that man, you got a defense that can shut down the defending Super Bowl champions to 10 points, and we can still beat them by 21 and that's a defense without a world-class corner i mean just it's just amazing how good this team really is right now